This is the Comics Alternative Interviews, a conversation with Mike Howlett. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Comics Alternative Interviews. I'm Derek, one of the two guys with PhDs talking about comics. And on this episode, I have the pleasure of talking with Mike Howlett. His new book, Snake Tales, has recently come out from Yo Books in IDW. It's part of their Chilling Archives of Horror Comics series. But before we get to that conversation, I want to let all of you know that this episode of the Comics Alternative Interviews is brought to you by the great folks at Discount Comic Book Service. Go to their website, dcbservice.com, for all of your comics pre-ordering needs. There, you're going to find all DC, Marvel, Image, and Dark Horse titles at 40% off of the cover price if you pre-order. For all of the other publishers, you'll find that those discounts are 20 to 35% off of the cover price. And every single month, you're going to find some unbelievable specials. Sometimes those specials could be as much as 45% off the cover price, sometimes as much as 50% off cover, but many times you can find discounts that are more impressive than that. And if you check out dcbservice.com right now, you'll find that you can get Snake Tales, the book that we'll be discussing today, at 35% off of the cover price. You get it for only $16.24. But the savings do not stop there, because you can find other books in the Chilling Archives of Horror Comics series from Yo! Books. For instance, you can find the complete Voodoo Volume 1, Devil Tales, and Tom Sutton's Creepy Things, all at 35% off of the cover price. Great discounts every single month. you got to check out the website, dcbservice.com. Go there for all of your comics pre-ordering needs, and after you do get your books there... Please be sure to send them an email and tell them that the two guys with PhDs sent you. Back in June, when Andy and I were at Heroes Con, we spent a lot of time talking and hanging out with Craig Yo. And one evening over dinner, he started telling us about a new collection from his Chilling Archives of Horror comic series that would be coming out around late summer or early fall. And this one would be composed of pre-code comics that had something to do, in some form or another, with snakes. He said that Mike Hallett, who has been working with him on other books in the series, was going to be editing this, and that Frank Burbrink, the curator of reptiles and amphibians at the American Museum of Natural History, would be writing the foreword to the book. Craig suggested that we have both Mike and Frank on the Comics Alternative and talk with them about the new release. Unfortunately, neither Frank nor Andy were able to coordinate their schedules to where they could take part in the interview. Now, Snake Tales came out in late August of this year, but in our attempts to try to coordinate a time where everyone could be a part of the conversation, we kind of put off the interview a little later. But actually, the later timing works to our advantage. Next week is Halloween, and I don't know a better book to get your loved one than this great collection of pre-code horror comics that have something to do with snakes. Now, if the name Mike Howlett sounds familiar, that's because almost exactly two years ago, we interviewed him when The Worst of Eerie Publications was released from Yo! Books. And when we interviewed him, we pointed out that Mike is an expert in all things Erie Comics. In 2010, he published The Weird World of Erie Publications, comic gore that warped millions of minds. And then a couple of years later, he did The Weird Indexes of Erie Publications. But Mike is also an aficionado on snakes, which is something that he discusses in our conversation about snake tales. So without further ado, here's my interview with Mike Hallett.
I'm pleased to have back on the Comics Alternative Mike Howlett. He is the editor of the most recent book in Craig Yo's Chilling Archives of Horror Comics, Snake Tales. Mike, welcome back to the show. Thanks a lot for having me back, Derek. I didn't know I would be invited again after last last time's debacle with the Erie Publications book. Well, I think the debacle part was not so much from your end. It's just the Erie comic stuff. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I feel responsible for unleashing it on the world, but I'm proud of it, too. Yeah, well, you know, as, as we talked about uh, during that interview, and I was looking right before we started to record, that was almost exactly two years ago. We talked with you in November of 2014, around the time that uh, The Worst of Erie came out. But, you know, you have that book, and then from 2010, uh, you wrote The Weird World of Erie Publications, comic gore that warped millions of young minds. So your forte as you pointed out a couple years ago when we first talked to you, was Eerie Comics. So I guess my first question is, what brings you to snake-related horror comics? Well, I have uh, always loved snakes. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it, plain and simple. We have, uh, my wife and I have a couple of pet snakes, and our favorite pastime, even more so than reading crusty old pre-code horror comics and yo books, Chilling Archives, is getting out into the wild and looking and photogra- looking for and photographing snakes. It's it's what our passion is, and so we know a little bit about snakes, and that's one thing that attracted me to to Craig's idea. So this was this was Craig's idea. This was something that, with your love of snakes, uh, you didn't approach him with. I didn't. Uh, the The origins of this. Uh, go back to last September in Albany, New York, where Craig and I were both uh, uh, guests at um, the Fanticon show, which uh, was put on by Tom Skule and uh, who used to have uh, Fantico, uh, the company Fantico, which uh, was a store and a publisher. They put out Gore Shriek, and uh, Tom and I have talked over the years, and he invited both of us there, and Craig and I were set up together, you know, keep the riffraff in one section. We were set up, to, <laughs> set up next to each other. And we were talking, and a gentleman walks in, and he was looking at pre-code horror comics, and Craig was talking to him, and it was uh, Dr. Frank Burbrink, and he had just been uh, appointed the curator of reptiles and amphibians at the uh, American Museum of Natural History, and he was excited, and Craig's like, oh, Mike likes snakes. <laughs> Mike likes reptiles and amphibians and introduced us and we hit it off right away. And while we were talking and talk, and we were talking a bit about uh, how snakes are portrayed in the old comic books that we love, Craig had the idea. It's like, so, uh, Frank, you want to do an introduction for a book uh, about all snake stories? And, and he was really excited about that. And uh, so we started collecting, uh, he, he said yes, and we started collecting stories. Um, myself, Craig, and uh, let that go by. And uh, Steve Baines from, uh, you know, the uh, Carswell from uh, Haunted Horror fame. We started collecting stories and picking them out, and I... I said to Craig, look, I, I, I love snakes. These stories are scientifically horrible. Could I please uh, take charge of this book? I'll take care of the editing and uh, you know, I'll pick the stories. And, and I want to write an intro because I just want people to know that it, th- these stories are not scientifically accurate. I just want to give, give snakes a, a, a fair shake there <laughs> as well as... Uh, exploiting them with the stories so uh, so yeah uh, it was Craig's idea when he saw two snake geeks talking about snakes and horror comics at the same time Craig is a genius that way mm. Mm. now we should mention that uh, Frank Burbrink was supposed to be or ideally was going to be in the interview with us, but over the past several weeks, we just could not coordinate a time that accommodated his schedule that the rest of us could do it. 
yeah, he's a, he's an incredibly busy person, and uh, I'm very jealous because uh, some of some of the dates that we had pitched to him, he was going to be in the jungle looking for snakes. Oh, really? <laughs> South America, or I, he goes all over the world. He's discovered new species of reptiles and amphibians himself. So this that's uh, he he inspires me on many levels. Okay, so how did you and Frank coordinate your searches for snakes in pre-code comics along with uh, you know, the efforts of, of Craig? Uh, well, uh, Craig, I don't want to sound like I'm really kissing his butt, but he's, uh, he's, very, uh, he's very wise to the ways of doing these books. He's done enough of them. And we set up a, a private group on Facebook, and whenever... Uh, it was uh, it was myself, Craig, Frank, Steve Baines, uh, and uh, Tillman Korth, who also works a lot. The, the usual gang of fiends, I guess you could call us. <laughs> uh, Tommy Stanziola and Toxic Tommy O'Brien. We would um, we we sent the word around looking for pre-code snake stories. I had a about a dozen right off the top of my head that I knew I wanted to use, and. Uh, we collected about twenty-five of them. We we put a panel or two into the into the Facebook group. What do you think? Oh yeah, I want to see more. And uh, you know, uh, Steve Baines is just a, a, a pre-code genius, and he he's still putting things into that that private group, saying, "Hey, if we ever do a volume two, here's one." He's he's always got his nose in the in the pre-code horror comics, and he he too is an inspiration in that respect. So you mentioned the possibility of a second volume of Snake Tail Comics. Do you think that this will be in the works in the the years to come? I, I would have to see what uh, IDW and Craig say about such a thing. I'd, I'd be up for it just because I had a lot of fun uh, going through these stories. And we, we cut out a ha- a, probably a dozen stories. So we, we certainly have enough. But... Uh, the cream of the crop are in this uh, this volume. Yeah. So this volume, uh, which again is part of the Chilling Archives of Horror Comic series from from Yo Books, uh, it includes eighteen different stories, all of which have something to do in one form or another with snakes. They're all pre code. I think the earliest is from at least the cover date October of 1945 and unless I'm mistaken I think I remember that the most recent is what is it January February 1954 or 53 is that one of the eighth ones oh, no, fe- yeah February 1954 that is fangs of death that was in nightmare yes oh yeah the the creek theme story yeah uh yeah the the earliest one is the is the from Dynamic Comics, 1946, um, it's the character, the Echo, uh, whose superpower was being able to throw his voice. Yeah, in in fact, of all the stories in this collection, that's the one that I found the most curious in that it's the only story that could conceivably fit within the superhero genre. Yeah, yeah, technically. (laughs) (laughs) And it's uh, it's got that... uh, Paul Gattuso uh, artwork, which is so out of the ordinary with really anything else in the book and anything else at all. He's just got this crazy, fluid, uh, cartoony style. And I think it's the only one that uh, has uh, uh, snake handling in it, like uh, religious snake handling cults. Right, yeah, you'd think that there'd be more of that in the snake comics. Yeah, well, we we can keep searching. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I'm sure it's out there. I'm sure it is. Yeah. Um, and you know maybe we can we can talk about the the research that you do in these individual comics because you know you've mentioned uh, you know the the artists in some of these stories and sometimes you guys are able to pinpoint the writers. One of the things that we've talked with Craig about in the past when we've had him on the podcast, which has been quite a number of times, I think he's he's our uh, most frequent guest is the work that goes into determining who a particular writer and artist is. And and he's told us before, and I think you told us this a couple of years ago, it's easier to determine an artist if you don't have, let's say, any kind of bylines of any sort. 
um, than it is to figure out who the writer of things were. So in, in compiling the Snake Tales volume, what kind of challenges did you have in determining who did what? Well, it, it's all, we do have a good group of people that we can uh, that we rely on a lot for uh, for some of the writers and artists. But I, I I I find it easier. I just recognize some artists' styles, uh, but and like the Iger Shop, for instance, uh, a lot of that stuff was done uh, on an assembly line, so it all looks the same. You can speculate as who the who the writer is, Ruth Roche or somebody, but um, I'm I'm much better myself with uh, artists because that I, mean, I guess I'm visually oriented and I, I I'm I'm very very obsessed with uh, with artwork because I can't do it myself I guess and, and a lot of a lot of the artists are. Um, like like uh, King Ward, who uh, who worked for ACG, it's a very very familiar style, and if, even if he's not signed, you can usually tell tell his his style. Uh, uh, I don't know; it's hard to say. Uh, each story is, is different. Uh, the the uh, the Craigstein story, we were we thought, oh, it really looks like 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 early Craigstein, or not even that early. And uh, looked it up online, and a few people said it was. And the, the more we looked at it and researched it, it, it certainly is uh, his work. Yeah, you know, the thing about the, the Krigstein story, uh, Fangs of Death, one of the things that struck me about that, and I guess in many ways kind of stood out uh, for this reason, is that it seems to be one of the most, how do I put this, sexual stories in the collection right. uh, in that the the young male protagonist seems to have uh, this curious uh, unnatural attraction to the albino cobra yeah in fact that's um, that's uh, uh, got a quote in it that my wife and I always say to each other uh, not 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 gonna go there but uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh it's a co- it's a Coquettish hamadryad, you know, hamadryad is another name for a cobra, and I just, I think that's one of the most brilliant lines in pre-code horror right there. Yeah. It's a hamadryad, and she's coquettish. <laughs> Well, you know, there are a lot of stories in this collection that, and in fact, I, I adventure that, that the vast majority of them deal directly with women and snakes in some form or another. And so I it, it was wondering in compiling everything if there was much temptation to take uh, a Freudian angle. Uh, you know, as a person who loves snakes as much as I do, and my Facebook feed is always, "Oh, look at the snake I found today," and uh, <laughs> I, I really, I'm tired. I'm in my I'm in my mid fifties. At this point in my life, I've heard the snake as phallic symbol <laughs> joke so many times that I I can I'm fine with never hearing it again. I I realize that. Uh, Probably a lot of these stories were playing on that, particularly Fangs of Death. But uh, no, no, I, <laughs> I try and steer away from that as, as often as possible. They're just, they're just limbless animals. They can't help, they can't help what they might uh, resemble. Okay, so we will steer clear from here on <laughs> in of anything Freudian. And if we do get psychoanalytic in any way, I promise you it will only be Jungian, where the snake becomes part of the collective unconscious. I'm I, I'm very good with that. <laughs> um, now, you know, I I mentioned that many of these stories, if not most, deal with snakes and women in some way. But there were some also some other themes that I noticed that kept cropping up again and again. And I'm wondering how this may have resonated for you. Um, snakes are also associated often with the other, whether the other be you know something like a, a third world nation or just someone who is not white male Anglo-Saxon. Uh, and then along with that, snakes and blackness. And blackness, not only in terms of, let's say, Africanness or African Americanness, but but anything dealing with non-whiteness. And so, I mean, you know, snakes and women, snakes and the other, snakes and blackness. It seems that snakes. In comics, especially the pre-code stuff, uh, were often used to represent that 
mysterious and at least for for white guys like us unknowable stuff beyond our immediate world and awareness uh, that's a that's a pretty great observation and really what is it about snakes that's i mean so many people hate snakes for really no apparent reason well they're they're dangerous they're ugly they're slimy they're, what it is is they're different they are they are the opposite of what we are they they they're close to the ground, so they they're sneaky. They're that they they don't have eyelids. Snakes don't have eyelids. They don't blink. They're always staring. They're evil. I I think <laughs> they, they definitely uh, played on the otherness that that the, the difference that snakes are from us. Uh, and and like you say, the the, the white comic book writers uh, they're they're going to tie in that differentness uh, that difference with. All the other ones that that frighten them, women, uh, uh, people of color. The, the, you know, the fifties was a was a tough time <laughs> to to not be. Well, I, I guess it still is to not be a white male. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so, a lot of the things that uh, in the ways that the snakes have come up in terms of women and otherness uh, it's also tagged the snakes are also tagged with some of those i guess misconceptions like they are slimy uh <laughs> that uh they are I guess you know the common stereotypes, right? They're they're always uh, going to bite you. The majority are poisonous, and you're a big fan of snakes as a whole, not just snake comics. And so, st- snake comics. And I'm wondering what were some of the frustrations in digging through all of these snake-related comics because they seem to propagate these stereotypes. Well, that, that's 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 why I wanted to write the introduction to it. That's why I asked Craig to, to take charge of this book. As if anybody's going to read my silly introduction. No, they're going to go right to the comics. But I, I wanted to explain that there is absolutely no scientific truth. They made up species. The King Rattler doesn't exist. <laughs> you know, they... Um... Oh, I got an Acela going by. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. Uh, I wanted to show that the the the, the science is just crazy, and in, in these you know only a small percentage of snakes in in the in the world are venomous, and they're not poisonous. Poisonous is when you bite into something and you and it and it poisons you like a poisonous mushroom. Uh, venom is when it's injected into you. <laughs> but um, I, I thought maybe I could bring a little bit of. Um, Science and certainly Frank thought the same thing. Uh, some some knowledge, along with the with the uh, you know the the exploitation and the sensationalism. Yeah, it, it, sometimes uh, you know the the protagonist kills the snake at the end. One thing I more than anything you learn educate yourself. Don't just uh, you know educate. Don't eradicate. That's uh, that's what a lot of our uh, uh, we snake, snake people say. Yeah, and, and you know, snakes are our friends. Uh, they get rid of a lot of creatures that we consider bothersome, uh, a lot of vermin. But you know, again, traditionally, snakes get a bad rap. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, if you didn't have your rattlesnakes uh, uh, in the western part of the country, you'd be overrun with vermin. <laughs> yeah, and that's just that's just the way it is. They they. They, they, everybody has a has a part in the in nature, and snakes is no less are no less important than anybody else. Well, in going through this list of eighteen stories in this volume, uh, one of the things that struck me is, with one exception, all of these stories are from different comic book series. I think the one exception is their two stories, Cup of Moon Glow and Fangs of Death, are both from Nightmare. But the rest are from very different, vastly different at times, comics like Chilling Tales, The Hand of Fate, Adventures into Darkness, uh, The Beyond, Weird Terror, Unknown Worlds, so on and so forth. So, I mean, you guys had a fairly wide spread in terms of where you found these snake stories. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, that was one thing. The final edit, uh, I, I wanted to keep different companies, different styles of artwork and different styles of storytelling in there. 
uh, uh, people like uh, Ace Comics, they, they they loved their snake stories and their snake goddesses. There's a there's a few from uh, a few different ones from Ace Comics, with different titles from them. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I wanted to, I, you got to have a Rudy Palais story, and <laughs> because he he's just such a you know his his sweaty drooling style is just perfect for uh, for that uh, opening snake story. I actually had one uh, another Rudy Palais story, and I wanted to open and close with it, but uh, uh, we had to we had to make some cuts, and uh, Craig. Uh, asked me to pick which one I wanted, so. You're right. There is a lot of sweating in the story Mirror Image. <laughs> uh, he was uh, he was definitely a very moist artist. <laughs> yeah, and it makes you wonder what uh, this... What's the uncle's name? I can't remember. Um, I got the book. Uh, it, it makes you wonder... Oh, Uncle Hugo. It makes you wonder what he <laughs> smells like with that much sweating. <laughs> You know that I never once thought of that. Thank God, but now I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe that says something about me. I don't know. Um, so, in in collecting all of these and then deciding which ones to include in this volume of Snake Tales, what were some of the discoveries that you made? That, I mean, something that you completely didn't know about before, and it can't, seemed to come out of nowhere. That that was really memorable. Well, thanks to. Uh uh, uh, Steve and Tillman, I, I saw a couple of stories that I hadn't seen before uh, that I, I didn't have in my collection. So that's all. That's always exciting to see uh, to see a new story. And, and uh, like um, the the Were Serpent of Karnak is one that, uh, <laughs> St- St- <laughs> which is a great story and a great title. Yeah, uh, it's one that Steve uh, found a couple of panels from, and it's like, oh, this this is great. I've got to read the rest of it so i i bought the uh i, I found the book on uh on ebay bought it it's a, it's a story that was very much worthy of uh keeping in here so yeah i, I discovered a few new stories and and be- best of all is i got to revisit that uh cup of moon glow which is just such a bizarre story so that the artwork which who, we don't know who it is uh we've had a few people throw a few suggestions at us it's it, it, it's it's really kind of bad. The anatomy is awful, but it's so meticulously inked that it's impossible not to love. And I, I've become obsessed with that story since uh, since we started putting this book together. And I, I really need to find more from this artist, but I've been uh, unsuccessful so far. Yeah, I think of all the characters, uh, the drawn characters in this collection, it's in this story, the, the woman, Sara, that, Sara. that creeps me out the most. Yeah, and, she, and it's the way she's drawn. Yep. And, yeah, and I think that the artist was probably trying to uh, keep in line with the, you know, the unblinking snake. She's always she's always giving a side eye, but they're always she's always got like like the scowl, which a lot of snakes have that that uh, scale right over their eye that always makes them look a little grumpy. And <laughs> she, she has that. I, I really like that. Well, what was another? Uh, a special notable find for you? Well, uh, Craig's Fighting Yank cover I hadn't seen, and uh, it's it's the one with the uh, the hooded menaces there uh, pulling a girl, uh, you know, the the sexy uh, victim towards a a, a a plush pillow with a cobra on it, all hooded up and <laughs> right. I had never seen that cover before, I, and I don't know if there's a uh, a story inside that issue to match it, but uh, it's it's on my want list now just to try and find that. And, you know, we should mention that as, as in uh, many other uh, Yo! books, in, around the center of each volume you will find uh, the covers yes. from – you know the comics that the stories appeared in, and so you have a color cover gallery as well. Yep, some of the best uh, snake covers we could find, including uh, including that fighting yank cover and uh, some uh, some Ajax covers. And, uh, we have the uh, the cover for that uh, dynamic comics with the Echo story in it, where where there's a a bound beautiful victim again. 
tied to a tree being threatened by a snake. And, it was a, and, I, and it's hard to say that one's not a... <laughs> Freudian, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of these covers, uh, if not the vast, vast majority, uh, have, have women who are seen as the, the victims of the snake. Because on, on the facing page of the Dynamic Comics cover, there's the Nightmare cover that you have, you know, a woman and you can, you know, see her cleavage is being victimized by a cobra. And then the cover to Skeleton Hand, you have a woman who becomes or who is a snake. Right. Uh, which, was, which is a very prevalent theme. Uh, it, make, it makes you wonder exactly <laughs> what some of these uh, frightened writers were thinking of. But yeah, there's a lot of uh, women turning into snakes in these stories, and we have a few of them in this book. Uh, I, you know, some sometimes I wish that, that could happen. <laughs> you know, I haven't seen a snake all day, but uh, but no, uh, it, it's a it's a strange, either either threatening with a snake or or being threatened by a snake woman. That's uh, men are weird. <laughs> yeah, and you know, one of the final stories in this collection, hissing horror. You also have a woman who becomes a snake, and, and it's really creepy, where a woman's head is on the body of a snake. And in fact, that image from Hissing Hara is in uh, the end paper in uh-huh. this volume. Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a great image. Uh, it's, it's the Iger shop, so they got the big, chunky, thick inks, and... Uh, and they, all, those, all those Iger shop artists uh, were, were, were drawing... Uh, Jack Cayman type women, so so it's a real pretty head on a on a reptilian body. Yeah, what's not to love about that? And she the, that that the guy the uh, the anti hero in that uh, is just such a nasty guy that uh, that's a really satisfying story for me. You know, one of the things that surprised me in reading through this collection is the relatively low number of Medusa stories there were. I thought, okay, this being a book of pre-code horror that deals with snakes in some way or another, and since you know, more times than not, the snakes are associated in some way with women, I would have thought we'd have more Medusa stories. We could have. We could have had a lot. In fact, uh, our our little face group, uh, Facebook group there had probably a half a dozen of them. But uh, it was... It was, I, you know, I didn't want to have too many of the same subject, although we do have a lot of snake goddesses and such. But I, I, I just picked my favorite Medusa story, and you got to go with that uh, High Iceman one. So, Mike, what are some other Medusa stories that you could have included in this collection, but you chose not to? Oh, boy. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head what uh, some were. But uh, I know we had some co- – well, we did get a cover in there, too, uh, the uh, the thing – covers sort of a Medusa cover with the beach woman with all the snakes around her. I always thought thought of that as a Medusa one. There's um, there was one that was a uh, where there was you know statues of scared men and uh, you know what was causing this, <laughs> which is that was also done in uh, Hammer Films the uh, the Gorgon. So <laughs> it's a that, that's a common plot line uh but we picked the best one that uh, high eisman just his artwork is uh, is is it drips as well as ghastly angles it's just i love his stuff hmm. now i was um you know flipping through uh earlier before we started the interview and you know, you were talking about the art on the Echo really standing out because of the cartooniness. I noticed something similar in the Worst Serpent of Karnak, yes. uh, from uh, you know the the King Ward art, yeah. and it struck me. I mean, that, that's a fascinating story in that the people who delve into the realm of snakes actually do make it out alive. So this is one of those stories where it's the snake or snake related people. Who are killed at the end, and in this case, it's the reporters who come back with uh, with a really good story. So they survive by the end. Yeah. 
But there are times that uh, the faces, especially of the the male reporter, just strike me as uh, kind of kind of strange in places, uh, but but strange in a good way. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, part of Ward's charm is his the the faces that I mean, there's all, there's always the the raised eyebrow and the and the the, the sneer and. and uh, I don't know. I just uh, he, he's his the faces are long and uh, it, it's hard to it's hard to pinpoint what I uh, some some of the things that are easily recognizable about his art. But, but boy, is he he really goes to town with the uh, with the snake queen and, and changing. And, yeah, what's her name? Sita or Seta? Uh, is that uh, that sounds right? Yeah. It, you were talking about the eyebrows. I mean, one of the most striking images in this story is, and I'm looking at one particular panel. I mean, it looks like her face is elongated, and <laughs> that length is accentuated by the really long eyebrows. Right. right. Uh, as she turned into a snake. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, snakes don't have eyebrows, but <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've said the science. <laughs> I don't believe women turn into snakes either, so. And another thing that, about that story that strikes me as memorable is it seems to be, and you know maybe this you can correct me here, but scientifically it seems to be the most sophisticated. Whether it's right or not, it's be you know it's another matter. But it's rather elaborate the scheme that the reporters come up with in order to uh, uh, in, inoculate themselves from the uh, the venom. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh that's one thing ACG a lot of uh, American Comics Group a lot of people have complained over the years and myself included in my Erie book they got a little verbose at times and like oh, who wants to read all this let's get to the snakes and but the, you know they 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 did some research and at least came up with a, uh, some plausible science whether or not it's true <laughs> and uh the you know the their verbosity uh, works in their favor. That it's a, it is it's a pretty interesting story. Mm. <laughs> and interestingly enough, the story that follows that one immediately follows it. it the Snake Pit. Uh, this is one with art by Bob Bear. Yeah. Um, strikes me as one of the most psychological pieces in this collection. Yeah, yeah, that one's kind of a that one's kind of a dreamlike or a night. It's kind of more of a nightmare. Uh, Especially with, um, I mean, you know, the art's not very good, and no. it, it's it's part of what I love about a lot of pre-code stuff is it, it's it's a, a, you know it's unlike anything else. It uh, the art the artwork is very uh, well, what what would you say? It's just pretty. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's pretty uh, it's pretty sparse. Yeah, it's stripped down. Yeah, but he's got a lot of interesting angles and uh, you know swirly psychedelic snakes and uh, interesting angles and cut off body parts. You know, not, not like many precodes, but you know, like uh, just uh, putting part of the body into the frame and right. And his uh, his snake people are pretty cute too. I got I got to be honest. Yeah, and and it starts off really weird as well because here we have this guy, he you know an adult man being carried to a pit by his parents, <laughs> and so you start reading this, you go, what the hell's going on here? Then you find out at the end that well, yeah, they they were his parents, but they were doing it for a reason. It's right. because the father learned that snake venom was supposed to cure madness. Yeah, <laughs> and the guy apparently came back, uh, you know, really messed up from the war. Yeah, yeah. And I like the way it ends, where um, you know the the, uh, the protagonist says, "I'm glad to be back, but the things I believed I saw will remain with me to my dying day. I shall always wonder: was it madness or a glimpse of what humans were never meant to see?" Ah, yeah, well, isn't that madness in and of itself? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you know, they are doing wonderful things with snake venom now, and who knows? Uh, I, if, if they come that far, I will gladly volunteer my madness. Because <laughs> his, uh, his psychedelic dream's pretty trippy, and it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, this is something that uh, could have easily fit into a 1960s comic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, I'm surprised it wasn't something that the uh, Erie Pubs lifted at some point. Hmm. But they didn't. Well, now, you know, you, you are an expert in Erie Comics. You have uh, expertise as well in, you know, pre-code comics, in horror comics in, in the broadest sense. Um, what is it about the pre-code stuff that keeps you coming back? Or maybe, in, maybe the, let me ask you the inverse. Uh, is there anything about more contemporary horror comics, let's say, you know, the 1970s, 80s, 90s, so on and so forth, that you just don't like as much? Or am, am I making that too much of a case that you're, you're too much pre-code and well, less contemporary? I... I... I love the stuff I grew up on, which uh, was the, the DC uh, uh, tw- when DC had the big twenty cents on their cover. Oh yes, you know, those those House of Mysteries, House of Secrets with uh, rights and covers and uh, and Neil Adams covers. Oh, I love those just as much. I, um, uh, the Creepies and Aries, I, I have all of those. I, I I love those as well. But the pre code is really. They weren't being watched. <laughs> you know, the publishers weren't weren't being watched then. So they were they were putting out what they thought they could sell. They were getting as outlandish as possible. I got to be honest. That's what I love. I love the uh, EC, of course, because it was just the best written and best drawn. But you know, the the the. Stuff like story, uh, story comics with uh, mysterious adventures and dark mysteries. I love that stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's purely uh, EC ripoffs, but <laughs> why not rip off the best? And the Gilmore stuff with uh, you, know, you got the occasional Basil Wolverton story, but a lot of that stuff's just uh, I want to say balls to the wall, <laughs> but <laughs> it's just crazy. It's just so out there and. And they they don't there's just a devil may care attitude that I I really like about the pre code. They, they would try anything to, to to sell a few comics, and I like that. Yeah, you know, you and I are I guess the, the same general age because the comics that I grew up reading really in the 1970s, and it was the DC horror stuff, right? So the House of Mystery, House of Secrets, Ghosts, uh, those kind of titles, and. I mean, yeah, in many ways, they were just taking a cue from the old EC stuff, right? You know, especially with the hosts. So you, you don't have the Crypt Keeper, uh, but you do have Cain, Abel, and Eve. Yeah. Uh, and what was it? That Cain was House of Mystery, Abel was House of Secrets. Um, and Eve then I even... Eve was for a while. Pardon? <laughs> Eve was Sinister House for a while, which yes. was my favorite of the title. Yeah, and then you had a, a comedic take on that in Plop, yep, which is one of my favorite uh, humor slash horror uh, comics growing up, uh, because you did have you know Eric Gonez doing the Cain, Abel, and Eve, but in a in a very different manner. Oh yeah, his I liked his uh, plump Eve. Uh-huh. <laughs> she was uh, she was good, and yeah, oh yeah, they, yeah, they were all a little bit plumper than their uh, serious counterpart. Mm-hmm. So, so that was—I mean—that was really good stuff. But, but you're right. There's something about the wackiness of the pre-code comics, the the kind of limitlessness, limitlessness of where they would go. Yeah, yeah. Now, in light of that, uh, in terms of the Snake Tales collection, what do you consider, let's say, the wackiest story of the 18 that you collected? Uh, well, you you had uh, mentioned the Bob Bear story, uh, the Snake Pit. That that's pretty wacky for reasons we mentioned. I got to go with a uh, cup of moon glow. <laughs> it, it's it's just, the artwork is so crazy. Uh, the the snake rather than having a forked tongue has an arrow shaped tongue, which this this artist whoever it may be <laughs> almost 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 created a new creature. It's just I love that. Uh, that 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 is the wackiest, and and I think it's my favorite in the book. I have to be honest. Huh. It's funny that you mention this because I'm you know, looking at the first page, the first panel of a cup of moonglow, and I'm noticing now that you mention it, the tongue with the arrow at the end. I did not notice that at first. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, the snake hanging down from the tree limb. Huh. Yep. 
and some pretty questionably uh, drawn alligators. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And another thing that strikes me about this story is just the title. I mean, all the t- all the other titles seem rather appropriate, right? Uh, the Phantom Python, uh, the the Snake Pit, Serpent of Doom, in the coils of the Python Queen. But then we get Cup of Moon Glow. I mean, this sounds almost it, it could be a romance story. Oh well, it, it is in a way, in its own special well, way. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. You know, she. She devours the guy. Uh, it, oops, spoiler alert. But, uh, <laughs> no, it's certainly not a romance, but uh, yeah, well, it, uh, isn't her, uh, isn't her uh, ritual catching the, the moon, the moon beams and turning herself into a snake? I, I right. can't remember exactly, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's appropriate, <laughs> if a little uh, different. Mm. But that is definitely one that you consider uh, the most wacky of this collection. Absolutely. And, and that, now, now, can you look at the title in the coils of the Python Queen without um, getting King Crimson's uh, uh, in the court of the Crimson King in your head? I, I can't. I, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point. The Crimson Queen or uh, <laughs> Python Queen. I can't help it. Yeah, and the way that the title is written at the top of uh, the first page, they, it, it even has almost like a sing-song arrangement of letters. Yeah, yeah. They're going I, up and down. That may have had part uh, part to do with it. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, that, that was another one that um, I I wasn't familiar with ahead of time the, in the clothes of the Python Queen. and That was another one that Steve uh, alerted me to. And that, I'm very happy that we got to include that one. I, I love the artwork in it. So, so this book came out. I guess the official release date was August thirtieth. And you know, I said at the top of the show, it was too bad we didn't get you and Frank on earlier. We just couldn't arrange things. But you know, thinking about this, it may not be such a bad thing that we're into October talking about Snake Tales because this would make a great Halloween gift. Oh, absolutely. I think. Uh Every kid that comes to your door should get a copy of Snake Tales. You know, okay, I hadn't thought about this, <laughs> but it wouldn't be a bad idea for IDW and Craig to do, let's say, a little you know, Halloween Comic Fest mini comic. Because, you know, they, they print those up that people can give away... Like during a, Halloween instead of yeah. candy, right? So like a, it would be great if IDW could come up with some of these chilling archives of horror mini comics, just small little things, uh, to put in, uh, you know, Halloween baskets or Halloween buckets. I like that idea. Kind of like a free comic book day thing. Mm hmm. Exactly. Wow. Why hasn't Craig thought of that? Uh, he's going to hear this and say he did. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but he should give us credit, though. Oh, absolutely. Well, I should give you credit. That's a darn good idea. <laughs> I mean, because... I'm not trying to have people buy the book and throw them in there. So. <laughs> he'd, he'd appreciate that, too. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, the, these are the kind of books, uh, you know, the Yo books, that the horror stuff, the pre-code stuff. I mean, these are great gifts. Uh, the way that they're curated... Uh, the uh, the format of the series as a whole, and then what IDW does in terms of putting everything together in a really nice hardback. Uh, I mean, IDW collections are some of my favorite. I, I agree. I, I, I'm so happy that uh, that Craig and IDW wanted me to do some stuff with them because, it, yeah, they're just beautiful, deluxe, hardbound, beautifully printed. Yeah, the inks jump on these pages. I I'm, I couldn't be happier. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you've done the Worst of Erie collection. Now you've edited Snake Tales. But, you know, you've done other work with Craig Books or Craig Yo Books in that, I mean, you're a part of the Yo Books family. Well, yeah, I'm uh, – he, he very generously gives me uh, uh, co-editing credit on all of the haunted horror stuff. But, uh, I mean – I. If they need a one pager and they say, "Oh, do you have this issue?" I, I have a pretty good pre-code horror collection, so that that that's that's the extent of my editorship. I'll I'll scan a few pages and send them over if they have a story they need. Uh, he, you know, he's 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 very kind to me <laughs> with, with that credit, but uh, it's it's his stuff. I 
he's got the ideas and he'll throw out, oh, well, we're doing this, do you have any ideas for it? And I might have a story or two. And Steve has extended the same courtesy to me with uh, his uh, Devil Tales, which is a wonderful collection. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I'm, I'm just a guy with a big comic book collection that uh, that can remember uh, a lot of the stories. Oh, you need one with, uh, you know, you need a story with a killer cat. Yeah, let me see. I got a few of them in my head. Let me... <laughs> Um, not that we're doing cat tales, although I wouldn't mind. I do love cats too. <laughs> hmm. So, and, you know, you you were telling us this a couple of years ago when we interviewed you around the time of the Worst of Erie. You know, you have a lot of these comics, and you were saying that for the Snake Tales collection, you found a lot of the stuff through you know different people posting on that Facebook page that you guys yeah. had. So, outside of the comics that you already have or that occasionally people recommend to you, where do you find this stuff? I mean, you mentioned eBay. Yeah, well, I I, went, I, I grabbed a few issues that uh, that had stories that we wanted uh, from eBay that Steve, had, you know, you know what, uh, what Craig and I had both did, we would go, we would go to eBay, go to uh, Golden Age Comics and put in Snake or Serpent <laughs> <laughs> and we found a couple of co- I think that's how we found the Fighting Yank cover. Um, really? Yeah, it, it just it, uh, the search engine pulls up anything with Snake in the title, you know. Um, so somebody is like, uh, Fighting Yank number twenty three Snake cover. Oh, let me look at that. <laughs> I, I did. Uh, I did remind myself of a few stories by doing it that way. It's like you know, Beware number twelve has a snake story. And oh, let me go look. And if it was good enough, we threw it into the kitty. So where else besides eBay? Uh, do you go to flea markets? Oh, as far as buying? Yeah, yeah. Just I mean, just finding new stuff. I mean, not necessarily snake-related, but but any oh. of the horror comics that you accumulate. Uh, well, I, I um, I we have a the the Boston Comic Con is pretty excellent. It's uh, every August, and. Uh, you know, there's no, you know, eBay is fine, but there's nothing like seeing the things uh, in the flesh or in the paper, and uh, and you know, getting to leaf through it and see if it's something that is worth your hard-earned money. I, I I prefer shows over everything. I actually haven't bought too many from eBay except for for this book <laughs> in in the last year. I I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, the local shows. Mm. <laughs> So what other projects may you have going on right now, perhaps for Yo! Books or maybe otherwise? Uh, I'm, I'm definitely in between projects right now. I, there's another one that uh, Craig wants me to do, and I will. Uh, I just need a little bit of uh, – I'll probably get started on that uh, within the month or so. Uh, I don't think he wants me to say anything about it. <laughs> but it's uh, it's also is, uh, this is somewhat uh, – uh, eerie related not saying what but it, but it's uh, related to the eerie publications again okay and uh, I, I've got a, a project I've been working on for three years a, a film book about Crown International uh, films uh, just reviewing the movies and giving as much history of the company as possible but it's really been on the back burner uh, while I've worked on stuff for Craig and just worked on a lot of other things. I did do a I guest uh, edited an issue of uh, Haunted Horror for uh, for uh, Craig Clesia and Steve. Uh, it was all uh, the original uh, 50s versions of stories that were clipped by the Erie Pubs. And th- th- so they're all in my uh, Worst of Erie Pubs book. And then you can, you can put them side by side and compare uh, how the Erie Pubs artists uh, either took it in a whole new direction or copied. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That, was, that was a fun little project. So you mentioned uh, going to events uh, around your area. For our listeners who may be up in the Northeast, um, where are you going to be next? Where might they be able to run into you? Oh, run into me? Well, uh, I'm on Facebook, and anybody that ever w- – I'm completely public profile. Anybody has anything they want to say to me or, or ask me, I'm more than happy to – I check my messages, my other messages file every day. I, I'm very open to to talking. 
there's no shows coming up anytime soon that I'm aware of. Uh, uh, the yeah, the Boston show is in August, and I really just run the film festival there and, and shop. <laughs> I'm a happy shopper there, but there's 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 plenty of uh, shows throughout the year. Just, I keep an eye open. I don't know what what one's coming up next. Uh, uh, the the Chiller Theater show in New Jersey is uh, Halloween weekend, and that's a lot of fun. I'm not going to be able to make it to that, but Craig Craig was there last year. And uh, it's a good good place to sometimes pick up some uh, uh, creepies and eeries and famous monsters type uh, magazines. Mm. So, do you regularly do something every Halloween? Uh, as far as celebrating the holiday, yeah, celebration, an event of some sort, doing something snakes and otherwise. <laughs> uh, well, last uh, last Halloween we found three different species of snakes, and in cold Massachusetts, that's not too bad on October thirty first. But uh, no, uh, my wife and I are big horror freaks, and ha- Halloween is every day for us. So it, it's really it's really just another day. The best thing about Halloween for us is that you can go into your local supermarket and see cool skeleton stuff that you might want to buy to decorate your house with year-round. Well, Mike, I want to thank you again for being on the Comics Alternative to talk about your latest volume from Yo Books, Snake Tales. I'm glad we finally were able to bring this about. Just too bad that Frank uh, Burbrink was not able to join us. Yeah, I wish Frank and Andy could be here, but uh, hopefully... Hopefully we were interesting enough on our own. I know Frank is is amazing to talk to about both comics and snakes, and I, it's been a while since I've talked with him. I'd like to catch up again and talk about both. Yeah. Well, hey, how about this? When Snake Tales Volume 2 comes out, we'll have both of you guys on definitely. That sounds fantastic. I'd, it'd be an honor, and it's, it's an honor today. Thanks so much, Derek. And there you have it, my conversation with Mike Howlett. I want to thank Mike for taking the time and talking with me about the new Snake Tales book, especially given the fact that he was doing the interview with me around rush hour. And as he pointed out to me before we turned on the microphone, he lives right near the train tracks. So every now and again in the background, you may have heard a train. That's what that noise was. Uh, But I appreciate Mike putting up with that and giving us some inside information on Snake Tales. And if you want to find Snake Tales and other great books in the chilling archives of horror comic series, then head on over to the website of our sponsor, which is Discount Comic Book Service. Go to DCBService.com, and there you will find Snake Tales and other Yo! books at 35% off of the cover price. You can't beat those prices. And after you do get your comics there, get in touch with us and let us know what you thought about my interview with Mike Hallett. If you go to the website, comicsalternative.com, you'll find that you can leave us a voice message via SpeakPipe. Or you can pick up the phone and dial us at 4153-COMICS. That's 415-326-6427. You can also email us. We're two guys at comicsalternative.com or you can email me directly. I'm Derek at comicsalternative.com. And you can find us all over the social media sphere, such as on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, Instagram, Google Plus, Goodreads, Pinterest, and YouTube. You can subscribe to the podcast through iTunes. And when you do, please remember to leave us a rating and review. You can also stream us through Stitcher. You can listen to us on TuneIn, on Spotify, and on iHeartRadio. And if you're an Android user, on Google Play Music. But you can find every single one of our podcast episodes, as well as the reviews and the comics-related commentary that we post on our blog, simply by going to our website, comicsalternative.com. We've got our annual Halloween special episode in another couple days, so be sure to return for that. And until then, I'm Derek. Take care.